Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flat Thunder channel. My name's Andy, and what we have here is an AC condenser pump and a brand new A-coil to try to stuff in the duct work of our furnace so we can have some central AC. Stick with us, I'll show you what we're gonna get into. We got our encased A-coil downstairs. We got it sitting on top of our existing furnace. Here's our duct work. We gotta rip this out and try to get this in here. So right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna rip out this section right here the furnace flows from that way up through here, and we're gonna to try to place this in here. When you're picking these out, they do have directional flow units. Make sure you pick the right one. I don't remember if this is upflow or bi-directional. Some of them do go both ways, uh, but this one, I, I'm pretty sure it's upflow. But keep that in mind when you're selecting your A-coil. It's a little bit larger in some directions than our existing ductwork, so we're gonna have some tapered pieces, but you know, We'll do what we always do. We're, we're going to make it work. Got dad over there. He's going to rip it out. He's going to make it work. Now what we're looking at is we got to set this thing in here. It just so happens it's longer and a little bit narrower. So we're going to try to line this surface here with some angle iron if we can find it. And we're going to have to cut this out. This is one of those moments that doesn't support my hoarder tendencies. This actually was an old bench seat that was by the back door of the house that we ended up scrapping. And I held on to this metal just in case I might use it for something good, bad for tendencies. Now we got some three pieces to make our supports fastened them into the main duct it strengthened it up and then the a coil is going to sit right on top here we have a flange in the back we need to make flanges for the outside edge and we'll screw it in from the outside edges and using these pre-drilled holes you use the panels the way you get this apart is you take the square duct and you push on diagonals and these quick snap seams will pop off so we got those sheets and that's what we're going to use to create the top duct. You know, we'll get this piece in, we'll get the A-coil slid in place, and then we'll figure out what we need to do up there. Again, using these, using these sheets from the top duct that we disassembled. This is the inside of the A-coil. Obviously, as the name, it makes an A-frame. We almost stuck this in here with instructions still inside there and some foam packing, so make sure you clean that out. Don't drop it on the hole.
the box all assembled. Everything's tied in over here, at least from a duct structure wise. It actually it turned out better than I thought it would. We just kind of winged it, didn't buy anything new. This box here that we created on the top has a front side, a back side that has ears on it. This is a flat piece and then an end on the other side. So four pieces we created from that old plenum that used to go from here to the main trunk. Now it's time to get in the box sill and drill a hole for our lines to go through. Here we go. Ow. Okay, we're through. Now we're gonna go through the outside and try to drill back through. Place the AC compressor outside here on the plastic pad that came with the unit. This is a 36 by 36 by three, if you can read that. Uh, this thing is basically sitting on this gravel pad. You don't want to make sure you level it out. We have this with a nice little grade away from the house. Plopped our AC compressor on there. Disconnect box wired in here with our core grip flex conduit. Uh, wired in to the unit That's on a 15 amp breaker. So we just ran 12 3 wire to this. That's 220 of course 3 inch PVC penetration here all sealed up with our suction line and our high pressure line ran through Got the connections down here that we hired or contracted to be brazed in And everything's good to go out here Inside, we got our suction and our high pressure line here. Ran in between the floor joists. Comes over and the contractor that we hired did a nice gradual bend here. It got it out of the way from where we needed it to be. And then it, it doesn't have any complicated like 90 degree turns. Got it plumbed in here and he brazed them in the correct way. So everything's tied in there. This little job you do here is our condensate pump. We need to get this plumbed in so it can pick up all the moisture that it pulls out of there. Here's the box of the condensate pump if you want to know what it is. Made in Mexico. So we got this threaded in here with sealant and we got to find a way to attach this so we know where to mount it. Right now I'm going to try just to make this a push fit where we can just jam it in there and then when we need to clean it we can take it out. Um, in the future, if it leaks too much, we'll have to glue it and or switch to maybe a shark bite fitting that we can rotate and disconnect. We'll just have to see how it performs. Region here, give or take. You wanna make sure you have a nice fall away from the A coil. And then we just need to get the Get the pump mounted down here. Mount it up higher so we don't break it off. Oh boy, that's embarrassing. I was running that in reverse. If I ever had a part of the job that I thought was going to be really easy, turn ridiculously difficult, this would be it. I'm glad I didn't show it to you. We got this tubing ran all the way over here. Just so it turns out that the tubing is about two foot too short. So, in efforts of expediting, we ended up with this PVC pipe. The original plan was to run it down to the sink and just have it tucked into the corner of the sink. Uh, but we have right now to get going, see PVC extension. I'll show you what we're working with. But running it over here, oh man. 
I guess we could always punch it in the side of the tub or put a turn down on it. So that tubing connects in here, um, right around there, and hopefully it drains in that pipe and drips out in there. It comes up here, goes across, goes across this I-beam and the ceiling. Had a real heck of a time stuffing it in between the duct and the I-beam. In between there, she's hanging down right there. In between the I-beam and the duct and all the way over and down to our pump. Um, gonna install an outlet in the future right about there dedicated just for this. Uh, but I'm not gonna bore you with that now. We're just gonna plug this in with the extension cord as we've been using it incorrectly previously. Uh, we got our got our drain line. I left this all unglued. We have a nice drape from the A coil over here coming this way and going down. Uh, we'll make sure those are pushed together tight and if they start leaking we can always take them apart and glue them. I was going to put an S trap in here but in talking with the guys that brazed my line set in, they said they stopped doing that because it just always gets clogged up and then they got to come out and take it apart just to clean it. Um, hopefully now all the fine stuff will go down into the pump and the pump will just pump it away. Uh, we'll see. It could prove to be a problem, but I don't think so. I trust their opinion. We're going to leave it without the trap because I had the same experience where it would just always get clogged and then it would back up and clog the port up there in the bottom. Wow, that comes out faster than I thought it would. Yeah, we're going to put an elbow on that. This elbow was 39 cents. Give it a couple seconds to cure and then we'll fire it up and try to keep an eye on this. That's just stuffed in the end of that coupling there. I don't think it's leaking, but if it is, we'll have to kind of get in there with some silicone sealing or something. But I didn't talk much about it in detail in this video, but this unit does have the relay built in there to switch it. The green wire from the thermostat is the fan trigger for the AC. The ground is just a ground that goes up to our relay and when the air conditioner is turned on at the thermostat this green wire will energize with low voltage and the yellow wire will energize to turn the AC compressor pump on outside. Uh, the AC unit outside just needs two contacts right here which is the white and the red. doesn't really matter which color. It just needs a ground and then a low voltage signal to close the contactors on the condenser pump outside. So that's that. Everything's hooked up and we're ready to rock and roll. Don't screw up like I did. I thought this originally was a 24 volt DC. My mistake. So we had some hold up on the relay. It was indeed 24 volt AC. So everything's good to go there. Got this old thermostat wire. We need to get this out of here because it's only a two wire. Uh, we replaced it with a multi-conductor wire. I believe we have a four-wire thermostat wire now. We got this old reliable furnace upgraded with a central AC unit. Everybody's answer was to buy a brand new furnace, and I just didn't want to get rid of my old Luxair. This thing, I've had this furnace longer than any other furnace. Knock on wood. And it's never let me down, and if it does, I have some of the abilities to work on it and fix it because it's all very much mechanical. There's no circuit boards or magical wire things in there that do tricky things and chips, none of that. It's all very mechanical and that's something that we can work on. So we wanted to keep this, but upgrade to central AC and we did it. Thanks for watching everyone.